Hi, I'm Misty Copeland. Welcome to PBS Kids Read Along. Today, I'm really thrilled to share with you a new book of mine called Bunheads, and it is illustrated by Sator Fiaji Bay. This story is based on my experience of coming into the ballet world as a young girl and the friendships that I made along the way and how important it is to be surrounded by people that are going to motivate you and guide you and inspire you and just be along on that journey just the same as you are. So here we go. When Miss Bradley announced they'd be performing the ballet Coppelia for the recital, everyone in Misty's class shouted excitedly and gathered around to hear their teacher tell the story of Coppelia. Misty didn't know what Coppelia meant, and she was too shy to ask, especially since it was her first ballet class ever. So Misty took a spot on the floor, and before she knew it, she was completely entranced as Miss Bradley told the story. Once upon a time, an odd old toy maker made a beautiful life-size doll named Coppelia to cure his lonely heart. The doll was so pretty and looked so real that a boy named Franz fell in love with Capella at first sight, even though he already told Swanhilda he would marry her. Swanhilda was furious when she caught Franz blowing kisses to Capella, but Franz ignored her anger. Later, Franz snuck into the toymaker's house to see Capella, but the toymaker caught him. When the toymaker realized that Franz was in love with his doll, he had an awful idea. Maybe he could use Franz's love to turn Coppelia into a real girl. Lucky for Franz, Swanilda had also snuck into the toy maker's house out of curiosity, and she was still hidden inside. She overheard the toy maker's evil plan and decided to dress like Coppelia to confuse the old man. Once the toy maker believed that his doll had finally come to life, Franz escaped. After that, Franz realized what a fool he'd been, and he married Swanilda. The two lived happily ever after. Misty loved how Swanilda never lost sight of her goal or her real love. She knew she wanted to be Swanilda. In just a few days, we will decide what roles you will dance in the performance, Miss Bradley said. Now, let's practice. First, there was a devilpe to Tanju. Front with one leg lifted forward, the pointed foot gently touching the floor. Next was the rond de jambe to tendu front, with the leg stretched straight out to the front, making big circles round and round in the air with the toes. Then it got a bit harder with the pas de beret, moving from side to side as one foot crossed over the other. They had such fun with the suit new as the young dancers twirled and spun in unison. Finally, the lesson ended with simultaneous pas de beret again and again. Misty picked up the steps easily, following only a half second behind the rest of the class. Have you ever danced Coppelia? Miss Bradley asked. Misty shook her head nervously, replying, I've never taken ballet before. Well, you're very good, Miss Bradley said. Come. She called to Misty and Kat, a younger girl who was full of energy. You two, up front. Misty could feel her heart pounding. Miss Bradley asked Kat to show Misty the dance of Coppelia. Coppelia sits in a chair on the balcony of the toy maker's house throughout the first act of the ballet. Kat held her arms in first position, then lifted her arms and turned her head like a robot, up and down and side to side. Kat performed the moves beautifully. When it was Misty's turn, she imitated Kat from memory. You are both very gifted, Miss Bradley said. As soon as Misty got home, everything about the new class and the Coppelia fairy tale tumbled out of her. I'm proud of you, Mommy said. Misty was so excited she could hardly sleep. She lay in bed thinking about the doll coming to life. Misty said her name aloud. Coppelia. It felt magical and full of mystery. The next day, Misty arrived early. Kat was there too, dancing the steps of Swanilda. 
Oh no, Misty didn't know if she could compete with someone so talented. Soon, Miss Bradley arrived. Do you girls know which part you want to play in the recital? Misty held her breath as Kat answered, Coppelia. When the other dancers arrived, filling the studio with laughter, Misty and Kat stayed close, learning from each other. Kat's movements were sharp, while Misty's were soft. They tried to copy each other's style until they were giggling. At last, Miss Bradley was ready to audition the dancers to cast the parts that everyone would play in Coppelia. Nearly all hands shot toward the ceiling to audition for Coppelia. Misty was nervous for Kat, but when Kat began to move, Misty knew no one would be able to outdance her. When it was time to dance the role of Swanilda, Misty was paired with a grinning younger boy named Wolfie, who was portraying the role of Franz. Wolfie was on a mission to catch Misty's attention. The next day, Miss Bradley announced who would play what parts. Misty was excited when Kat got the part of Capella, and even happier when she won the part of Swanilda. The next few weeks were full of hard work for Misty. She had to perform both Swanilda and Coppelia when she tricked the toy maker into thinking she was the doll who had come to life. It was a lot to learn. Watching Kat dance her parts with ease made Misty try harder. They inspired each other. The night of the performance, Misty was so excited. She couldn't keep still. Staring up at the heavy red curtain, Misty felt a hand on her back. You okay? Kat asked. Misty nodded, I'm ready. And then the curtain was rising up and away. Bright spotlight spilled onto the stage, casting a spell of stillness that would only be broken by movement. In her pink tutu and braided bodice, Misty pranced onto the stage as Swanilda, with Wolfie playing the part of Franz. At last, lost in the dance, she felt the heat of the lights when she twirled and imagined she could see every face in the room, especially Mommy's. Misty smiled, proud of what she, Kat, Wolfie, and all the other dancers had accomplished together. She couldn't wait to see what they would do next. And there's our little bunhead crew. <laughs> I really felt that it was important for me to share this story uh, because I think that it's, it's really important to accept and love yourself just the way you are. And I think that's something that Kat and Misty did in this story was that they realized and accepted their beautiful, unique differences and embraced them and supported each other. Um, but, you know, other than being inspired by the people around me, um, who support me and, and help to shape and guide me and make me the person I am. I also feel inspired by writing. Uh, I think that it's, it's really beautiful to be able to be inspired by your imagination, to be inspired by the people around you and the things that happen around you, and to express that in an artistic way and through an artistic outlet, as I do with dance and, and with writing. It's also been interesting in this time, which, you know, all of us have been inside and um, with our family and friends and, you know, not being able to do the things that we're used to doing. But I think it's, it's beautiful to, to be able to explore and to find other things that, that inspire you to be creative. And cooking has been one of those things for me. I really enjoy creating in the kitchen and you know, creating combinations of different foods and, and making it into a meal that I put together from start to finish. And, and there's something so uh, relaxing and also empowering to be able to challenge yourself um, in, in that way. And so uh, I just want to thank you again and encourage all of you to be proud of who you are as, as individuals and embrace your beautiful uniqueness. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me for this PBS Kids Read Along. Happy reading.